It has often been said that there are spirits inside all living things. Some people believe that spirits dwell within stone shrines and Buddha statues, such as those you would find in a Zen garden, like this one. Others believe that there is actually a world where such beings exist. Hello, my name is John Turner. Tonight's movie, Spirited Away, imagines such a world made possible only through the art of animation. Here in America, animation is usually regarded as children's fare, and in the case of painstaking, hand-drawn animated features, a lost art abandoned by major studios in favor of computer animation. But in Japan, hand-drawn animation, or anime, as fans like to call it, is still very much alive and goes beyond children's fare. Now some creations from the land of the rising sun can be cuddly indeed, but there are also works that can be bizarre, erotic, and quite violent. And I don't mean the cartoonish kind. But then there are animated films which are simply art for the sake of it. Spirited Away, produced here at Studio Ghibli in Tokyo, is one such movie. The movie's director, Hayao Miyazaki, is considered by many animation fans all around the world to be one of the finest of his kind. Some have even dubbed him the Walt Disney of Japan. His movies are among the highest grossing films in his native country. As a matter of fact, Spirited Away is the most popular movie of all time in Japan. Now Miyazaki doesn't usually make his movies with the intention of selling toys like this or this. Some Japanese animated productions, on the other hand, exist to do just that. Pokemon! As mentioned, Miyazaki does not resort to such tactics when he makes his movies. Nor does he make them with the intention to cater to audiences' tastes, oh no! His movies exist on account of his imagination and his imagination alone. In fact, it's because of such circumstances that Spirited Away took shape to begin with. Miyazaki once met the daughter of a friend, a ten-year-old girl with a distant look in her eyes. This chance encounter inspired Miyazaki to make a movie for the people who used to be ten years old, and for the people who are going to be ten years old. But, if there's one thing that you can count on from Miyazaki, it's his ability to take such a scenario and set it in a world that only he can conjure up. It might be, oh, a post-apocalyptic future consisting of poisonous jungles guarded by territorial insects. Or it could be a floating city inhabited by robots and dangerous technology. It can also be ancient forests populated by creatures who are cuddly, friendly, and harmless, as well as those who are not so much. It could even be set in the sky where witches glide on their broomsticks on special delivery trips, where pigs actually show that they can fly, well, sort of, and even where pilots and pirates of every kind duke it out. And of course, wherever Miyazaki goes, you can bet that there's going to be a lot of flying, particularly in the form of these airships. Or in the case of this film, a hot springs bathhouse frequented by thousands of Japanese gods and spirits. But why a bathhouse? Because, as Miyazaki reflects, I have some strange impressions of Japanese bathhouses dating from my youth. I always wanted to stage a film in a strange place, and I thought a bathhouse for gods would be even more fun. And now it's your turn to experience the genius of this master animator. So without further delay, sit back, relax, and enjoy Spirited Away. <laughs> 